Hey everybody. Uh, I get a lot of questions on this page, uh, whether it be build tips, uh, build questions, set of questions, things like that. So I thought I, I'd start doing a couple videos on the common ones um, or things that you guys request uh, to show the process I use to, to, in this case, build a ball differential. Some of the tips uh, and tricks throughout the build that I do just to help get a long-lasting smooth ball diff um, so this is out of a b6 kit to build I'm doing and I thought I'd just film it while I do it and walk you through some of it so um, start out by obviously opening up all the packages and I like to get a nice clean work area I do it on a towel I'll show you why um, as I do these diff balls um, I like to wet a spot while I got it out. I'm gonna go ahead and spray these off too. Uh, the rings. And this is just a typical motor cleaner. I've used brake cleaner in the past too. It's a little cheaper. Uh, does the same thing. You're just trying to get, there's like a little bit of film on here. Probably some sort of anti-rust agent uh, that we're trying to get off of there. Uh, do that on both sides, same with these. Just get them on both sides, nice and clean. Um, and so, I'll open these up. That wet spot just kind of helps hold hold everything where, where I want it. So, these don't go running from me. Nothing worse than crawling around on the floor trying to find little thrust balls. Um, and so I'll spray these just real lightly again. Like so. Roll them around in that just a little bit. Helps get any anything on them off. Uh, roll them over to a dry area. Same thing with the thrust balls. I don't have to keep them separate. Far away so I can't mix them up. Um, I have seen that done before. If somebody having issues with a diff, pull it apart, and if there's a either a diff ball in with the thrust or or something silly like that. So snip these down. All right. So with the diff rings, um, these were out of the kit. These are out of uh, another kit. Uh, ones I had laying around. I like to sand them. Sand them down. Uh, I do it on a countertop. Any really flat surface uh, is good. The spongy little pit mats or a rubber one like this would not be, it'd be a little less than ideal. Um, I'll show you how I do it. Um, again, I do this on a flat surface. So I have an old outdrive here. It's a, I think it's a B5 outdrive. Um, and so I'll just take that ring set it on there and then I just do a little figure eight pattern um, and I make sure to rotate that 90 degrees every once in a while just so you're getting even pressure on that ring um, and you'll notice as you're sanding and you look at it you'll see there will be some darker areas and then there will be the areas where you can tell that it's had the grit on it um, I, and I'm, I'm assuming that's just uh, in imperfection in that surface, and that's what we're doing. It's just trying to get it all flat, leveled out. Um, also, put a little bit of grit to it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use the ones that I already sanded in this build. Um, and this is just associated lubes that come with the kits. Um, I just had a bunch of it laying around and was sick of messing with ten little bottles so I put them in little oral syringes um, so oh yeah before we get ahead of ourselves here I'll spray these off to the outdrives and I will wipe down where those rings sit make sure they're good and clean and you can see the, the gunk that comes off of there um, and that's what we're looking to get off, off of the, the surface. So put that on. 
stick it ring on there. Put the bearing in. And when I'm doing this, I like to uh, make sure I get more of the grease. I'd, I'd rather have too much grease than not enough. Because when everything gets put together, pushed together, it'll squeeze squeeze out what, what it doesn't want in it. Um, and I'll show you, I finish these, before I put them in the car, I break them in just using a regular uh, drill. Um, you can do it in the car too. It's, it's a little easier, I feel, out of the car. You can get it set. You kind of get a feel for how you like it in your hands, um, how to set them. So we'll get the bearings on there. So then I will go ahead and take the gear and I put a little bit of grease in all those holes. Again, making sure I get a decent amount in there. So then I'll flip it over, push it on, you see it all squish out. And uh, then I'll take these diff balls and using the tip, you can do this with the associated tool too, or the little grease tube. You can pick it up and set them right where you want them uh, instead of trying to fumble with your fingers. And that's just makes it a little bit easier. All right, so those are all in. Nice, a lot of grease in there. Take the other half, and we'll stick that together. I'm gonna set that off to the side while I build the uh, thrust assembly. Um, I've been messing around with sand in these rings too. Um, I, I can't say that I've noticed a huge difference. Uh, they seem, they're small enough that I don't think there's much of a wavy surface to that but that's one thing i've been messing with uh plan to do a little more trial and error on that this summer um and so i take that black grease and run a bead around that and that just gives me a nice place to set the thrust balls and I do the same thing, pick it up with the, the tube, the applicator, whatever you're using. Um, I've always had luck with using the associated uh, greases for diffs. Uh, they just, they work well, in my opinion. So I'll put this on a screwdriver, put the other washer on. And now this is another part where I like to make sure that there's just an ample amount of grease in in between all those balls okay, even it out with my thumb a little bit there wipe her off find the shallow half yeah all right my eyes are Deceiving me here. All right. Yeah, we're good We'll stick that in drop in your spring I do like to compress this spring a little bit before I put it in uh, so I'll just put it in the pliers and Compress it a little bit a Couple of times That's just something I always did when I ran off-road and so it's carried over to do an oval um, take your Tina. Get in there. So I like to make sure these go in pretty smooth. Um, and this one's going in a little rough. So if you look on this bottom edge, sometimes there'll be a burr or a little bit of flashing or uh, something along there, so If 
clean it up a little bit. Um, if you have to push it in there real hard, I don't, I don't like to do that as much. I'd rather have it go in somewhat free. If it's a little snug, it's all right, but that's a little better. Maybe. There we go. Just had to get her lined up. And so I'll start to tighten that. And so what I'm doing is I'm watching where this is at in the out drive. Um, and as it starts to get, get down, oh, within about a sixteenth of an inch, I'll feel it. And once you start getting that tension and you know that it's, it's getting together, um, that's when I'll start chucking it up in a drill and actually breaking it in a little bit. I'll tighten it up, break it in a little bit, tighten it some more um, until I get it to the bottom of the out drive. Um, so here you can see it, it's not it's not quite all the way down, which is about perfect. Still feels pretty light. So I just take a normal drill. up and then I hold the gear and I'll run it I'll run it in each direction usually for about a minute um, to speed this up I'm just gonna kind of show you my go to the last step and I'll come back and, and finish it but so I'll tighten her up you can feel that screw start to get snug, and that's when I stop, and I'll I'll run it for uh, about two to three minutes, um, and this just gets it it broke in, uh, so that how it's set in your hands, and you put it in your car, you can go out and practice, and come back, and it's going to be really close. Uh, you aren't going to have to take a couple practice runs trying to get your diff dialed in. You won't have the risk of having it set too light um, as it breaks in. Now it starts squawking. Now you're doing damage to the diff. Uh, that's, so that's what we're looking to avoid here. Uh, just get it set properly from the get-go. Um, like I said, I'll just run that for a little bit, pull it out, and as you build them, you'll, you'll get a feel for how they're supposed to uh, feel by hand. Um, I like to run a pretty tight diff uh, for oval. Um, just a personal feel um, But if these ears as they get to the bottom of the out drive, that's where you're bottomed out So you aren't going to want to keep cranking um, If you watch those ears, that will get you a, an idea of how tight your diff is getting um, Here you can see all the grease that it pushed out and I'm okay with that because I can clean that up real quick uh, Before I put it in the car now. I know it's got proper lubrication um, If it's not pushing it that grease out then I'm wondering if it is got enough grease to begin with so just a couple of my I guess my tips on how I build them um, if you guys have any other questions or, or other videos you'd like to see I'd like to do one uh, on how I build shocks uh, floating pistons I get a lot of questions about um, so we'll uh, we'll do those keep an eye on this page make sure to give it a follow give it a like and uh, yeah, don't hesitate to uh, shoot me a message if you have any other questions or, or like I said, any recommendations for a video. So thanks for watching.